Good morning, everyone, or afternoon or evening, whatever salutation is appropriate for the time you're viewing this video. I'm Dr. Krishna Patisipu. My pronouns are they, them, and theirs. And I'm the Director of Diversity Recruitment and Retention for the School of Education at CU Boulder. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about some opportunities and supports in the School of Education and to share my top 10 tips for navigating college as a first generation college student. First off, I know that we're at a very difficult time in the world and in our lives right now. I'm hoping that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy and if anyone you love or if you are experiencing physical or mental illness, financial insecurity, separation from loved ones, or racism as a result of this pandemic. I'm holding space for you and sending all of my best wishes to you. I know it can be a little bit tough to focus on the future right now, um, so I thank you for joining me today and uh, thinking a little bit about college and all of the exciting next steps that you're going to take in the absence of actually being able to meet you and shake your hands, uh, this is the next best thing. So I'm thrilled to hear that you're thinking about uh, joining uh, as a student in the School of Education in this fall, this fall, or if you're not, if you're not considering the School of Ed and are just joining me today uh, to hear my top 10 tips, I'm also happy that you're here too. I wanna start off by talking a little bit about why people go to college and what that means for you as a first generation college student. But before I do that, it's probably important for me to define what I mean by first generation college student. You are a first generation college student if neither of your parents graduated from an institution of higher education in the United States. That includes community colleges and trade schools. So if, for example, you have a parent who graduated from a two or four year college in another country, you are still a first generation college student here in the US. You are also still a first generation college student if you have an older sibling or cousin who graduated from college because you are still, you're a part of the same generation as they are, make sense? Now that we've defined that term, let's talk about why college. Why do people choose to make such a big investment in terms of finances, in terms of time? Why are you making the choice to go to college? Maybe it's because for you, college represents the promise of a better life for you and your family. Maybe it's because you've always known you wanna be a teacher or a community leader and those jobs require college degrees. For me, as a first generation college student and the daughter of an immigrant, it was a combination of all of those things. I looked to college for the promise of what my life could be, of who I could become. Whatever reason you're here, I'm so glad that you are. So now let's get to the good stuff. I might be a little bit biased, but the School of Education is my favorite place at CU Boulder, and I'll tell you why. I love working here because I feel seen and affirmed in all of my identities as a queer person of color. I love that I have the opportunity to share the expertise that I have gained through navigating universities as a first generation college student uh, with all of my students now. As a first generation college student, you have the choice to enroll in a one credit class I teach during your first semester called First Year Success at CU. In this class, you, along with other elementary education and leadership and community engagement majors, will learn uh, lots of tools for making the most of your future careers in education and leadership and to envision the teachers and community leaders that you want to be. You also have a choice to join a community in the School of Ed called Education Diversity Scholars, or EDS, which is part of a larger network of equity and inclusion programs across the university known as the CU Lead Alliance. 
This opportunity comes with individualized support from me and peer mentors, as well as the chance to earn an annual participation scholarship. We will stay connected throughout your four years at CU Boulder to make sure that you have all of the support and resources that you need to be successful. If you're a first generation college student who's thinking about coming to CU Boulder to study something other than education, there are programs similar to EDS that you can connect with, such as the Bold Center in Engineering, the Miramontes Arts and Sciences Program, the Diverse Scholars Program in the Leeds School of Business, and the Diverse Musicians Alliance, among others. There are a total of 13 programs like this across campus. The thing I love most about the School of Education is our explicit focus on social justice as an essential component of education. All of our elementary education teacher candidates earn an endorsement in culturally and linguistically diverse education, which means that when you graduate from, from our program, you're prepared to support students from all communities in their learning. Our classes in the School of Education focus on subjects like the opportunity gap, economic inequality, and privilege, power, and difference. I feel proud to teach and lead in the School of Ed community for this reason and so many more. And finally, I'd like to share my top 10 tips for first-generation college students here. Uh, I've cultivated this list throughout my 11 years working in higher ed. Some of the resources I share are specific to CU Boulder, um, but I think the main message of these tips is applicable to any first-generation college student. So number one, know you're not alone. There are dozens of people like me all across the university whose job it is to support you. From academic advisors to work-study supervisors, to instructors, to student support professionals, we are here for you. Those of us whose parents are not college graduates didn't inherit the institutional knowledge that many other students did. So if you don't know what a bursar's office does, for example, you're not the only one. Ask someone like me to translate for you and help advocate for you when things get tough. Remember, we're not doing you any favors. The reason we work here is to help you, so use us. Number two, find your community. The strongest predictor of first-generation college student success isn't GPA. It's being connected to a community of like-minded and supportive peers and mentors. Programs like the CU Lead Alliance that I mentioned before, as well as literally hundreds of student-led groups like the Black Student Alliance, Umasi Mecha, Undergraduate Student Government, the Muslim Student Association, Queer and Trans People of Color, also known as Kitipak, and the Vietnamese Student Association are just a few of them. If you don't see a club you want to join, you and a group of friends can start one. There are also residence halls and floors where you can live with students who share a common interest or identity, like the Spectrum, Multicultural Perspectives, and Lucille Buchanan Communities in Hallett Hall. If you're commuting to and from campus, Finding a community that you connect to is even more important. Check out places like the Student Academic Success Center, or SASE, that has an excellent study space that commuter students can use at any time. I know that I would not have been successful in college had it not been for groups like the Gay Straight Alliance and the Creative Writing Club. Find your people. We're here. You just have to look. Number three, manage your time. The number one difficulty first-generation college students share with me is adapting to the new pace of college life. Juggling a drastically different schedule of classes, working part-time, and commuting can be extremely challenging. Students often express frustration about earning lower grades on tests, quizzes, and papers than they did in high school. College is a whole different ballgame, and finding resources that can help you manage your time is essential. Many of the organizations I listed above provide workshops on time management. There are also tons of cool apps like my personal favorite, Todoist, that helps me keep everything in order. Be patient with yourself as you adapt and know that what you did to succeed in high school will look different than it did before. Number four, 
Communicate clearly. This, is, this one is quite simple. College is an onslaught of information, including emails from your academic advisor, messages on online learning portals from professors, group texts from classmates, etc. All of this can be extremely overwhelming, so be sure to reach out to your mentors and peers for support with managing it all. One of my favorite strategies is to reserve 30 minutes the same time each day to respond to all of my messages so I never forget if I responded or not. Find what works for you and stick to it. Number five, borrow wisely. Student debt is real. As the cost of higher education grows exponentially and many families' income does not, college can create a significant financial burden, especially for students from low-income families. Remember that the more grants and scholarships you can earn, the better. Even small $500 or $1,000 scholarships and grants help. Loans are becoming more and more unavoidable, especially for students who choose to live on campus. Find mentors you feel comfortable confiding in and ask them for support mapping out your education expenses. While debt might be a reality, it doesn't have to be as large or as scary as we might make it out to be. Number six, know your strength. Some real talk. There will be times along your journey when you feel overwhelmed and consider giving up. During these times, it's so important to reconnect to your inner strength and remember why you are here. The institutions you are navigating as a first-generation college student were not originally built with you in mind, and navigating them can make us feel worn down and lead us to doubt our rightful place within them. You absolutely belong here. This is a feeling known as imposter syndrome, but all of the hard work you've done throughout your life has carried you here and you deserve every good thing college has to offer. Make sure to turn to your support system during this, these hard times. In those moments when you don't believe in yourself, we will. Number seven, expand your horizons. College affords so many opportunities to do and experience things you never have before. In addition to joining student clubs, you can go on alternative spring breaks where you work alongside communities in need and visit somewhere you never have before. As an education student, you can volunteer at a local elementary school or community organization. Use the elective credits in your degree plan to take a class on something that interests you. Underwater basket weaving, maybe, a poetry seminar, ethnic studies, a dance class, chances are you'll only do this college thing once, so make the most of it. Number eight, do it for you. If you're anything like me, I went to college to make my parents proud. The, my dad wanted me to be a medical doctor, and I spent so many semesters in science classes where I didn't connect to the material. My heart was in the arts. I spent half of my college career feeling unfulfilled and disconnected from my vision of the future. When I finally made the decision to switch to creative writing and intercultural communication, that was when I felt truly happy for the first time. And guess what? My parents were still incredibly proud of me. College is a huge undertaking, and for many first-generation students and families and students of color, it's an effort we make for more than ourselves. It's for our families and our communities. But at the end of the day, this journey has to be for you. Economic security and success come in the form of many different careers. My advice to you is to consider how, consider your happiness on all levels when you think about what you want to be when you grow up. Number nine, lift as you climb. Alice Walker wrote, activism is the rent I pay to live on this planet. None of the first-generation college students who have ever graduated could have done it without support and guidance from those who went before. The best news is that none of us has to do it alone. As you access the social privileges that come along with earning a college degree, I urge you to do your part and lift up others. Are there students from your high school who will come to college after you? Offer to help them with their FAFSA. 
If you become part of an academic community like Education Diversity Scholars, sign up to be a peer mentor or teaching assistant for classes that come after you. Give, your, give of yourself what you can and reap the beauty of what you sow. Number 10, stay connected to your roots. And finally, as you embark on this college experience, don't forget where you came from. So often, those of us who are first-generation college students or who are underrepresented in any way learn to think about ourselves in terms of a deficit. What do we lack that other, more privileged students have? How can we get to where we want to go without those things? What we forget or what we learn to overlook is that we have a wealth of knowledge and resources right here inside of us. The skills of perseverance and resilience we build by navigating the world as people of color, working class folks, undocumented folks, LGBTQ plus people, those endow us with everything we need to be successful in college and to transform it for the better. As you ascend to these new spaces, make sure to bring your communities along with you. Talk to your parents and younger siblings about what you're learning in your political science class. Ask your best friend from high school to read your English lit paper. Draw inspiration from your grandparents and your aunties when you feel weary. Yes, you will be a college graduate and you will also always be who you have always been. Make sure to honor that. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please don't hesitate to contact me at the email address included below in the notes if you'd like to enroll in the class I teach in the fall, if you'd like to apply for Education Diversity Scholars, if you'd like me to connect you to those similar programs in your major that I talked about, or if you have any questions at all about CU Boulder or the School of Education. If for whatever reason you decide CU Boulder isn't the right choice for you. Um, most other colleges and universities have networks of support that are similar to what I described, so make sure to reach out and ask about those programs wherever you decide to go. I'm sending my best wishes to you for a momentous and prosperous next step. Never forget to be proud of what you've accomplished so far and confident about all you will achieve in the future.